Sirens and alarm. Wonderful time, uh, it's the most wonderful time. Uh, it's the no, most not now. Time. Today, Queens. Shoes, shoes. Oh, hey, friends, do you want to review a No, I don't. With you, me? You have to stop doing this. I knew you would. You have to stop this. The pills, you need to be on the medication. You have to not. And this now, and the bathroom the other day. I was waiting in there for 30 minutes. I peed in the corner, you're gonna have to clean that up. It's December, and that can only mean one thing. We don't actually celebrate Christmas though, because the idea of a national holiday powered by Cluedo makes us want to die. So I've been up all night inventing the official shut up and sit down holiday of economic hexagonal tile laying game fest. Really? Yes. Uh, it's, what, what, what's that? It's, it's a holiday where everybody has to play economic hexagonal tile laying games. games. Is there anything else to it? No, but you, uh, don't be such a grumple hex, Paul, because we've got some grumple great hex. games. Is a, a grumple yeah. hex is a thing? It's somebody it's who doesn't want to play like economic, economic hexagonal, hexagonal tile, tile laying games, games of, 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 of any kind. Of, yeah. uh, so stick around because tiles. hot dog, of we've got a... Uh, show yeah. yep. hexagons. Yep. Yep. Don't, don't do that! Okay, so you remember in October we reviewed a game called Trains, which looked kind of boring like a crime against pleasure, but was actually great. Well, Suburbia looks even more boring, but is actually even better. Yeah, so this happened. A couple of days ago, I got up to learn Suburbia. I couldn't sleep. Set up a two-player dummy game and just played against myself. It's not just that I finished that game, an hour later I was sad when it ended, playing by myself, in a dressing gown. That doesn't happen to me, or to anyone in reality. So how does this nonsensically Moorish game work? Well, for a start, it's very simple. It's like two pages of rules simple. This is your burgeoning borough. It'll start looking like this, and what you want to do is gradually expand it, attracting more and more people. You start with $15 million in your civic pockets, and on your turn, all you'll do is look at what's available to buy in the market, make a selection, refresh that market, pay for what you have, and put it down somewhere. But what you're really doing here is sweating and thrilling at the choices that you can make. Look, my very first hex, I put down a fast food restaurant, I put it here because I'm going to get three more people for every green residential area it's next to. So hey, I figure, let's have some more suburbs, that gives me some more people, and then some more people because it's next to another green residential. And then I might decide, well, I've seen this homeowners association in the market. That'll give me more money for every green residential thing. And then I stick it next to the restaurant and that works in a kind of a chain combo. I'm having a fantastic time already. Better not build anything residential here because my heavy factory tells me that for each adjacent political or residential area, I'll suffer a reputation hit. What does that mean? Well, these bars track both your reputation and your income. Anything with a, a circular symbol there affects my income. Anything with a square symbol affects my reputation. I want a good reputation because that affects how many people come to my borough every turn. I want income because it's income and that's how I'm going to pay for all this stuff anyway. Maybe I should put a landfill down. I'll just put a landfill down because that would give me just plus two income and minus one reputation if it's adjacent to anything. Uh, I, I just had the money. I just had the money for that. You see how Paul's borough has already got some personality going on with this weird fast food mecca and a landfill hidden behind his factory? We'll get back to that. Uh, meanwhile, what I've done is I've built a really big park and a parking lot and people can park and then walk to the business supply store, which in suburbia terms is 
living the dream and I've got a crazy reputation. Now let's talk about these sliders, okay? Because they are more interesting and more fun and more nuanced than if the were just to give you a lump sum of, of money or people. Because what you're controlling is acceleration and deceleration and that's fascinating because if we look over here, then as I get people and I'm gonna shoot up, I'm gonna pass these red lines. And what that does is it's like a speed bump with a goo goo and suddenly your reputation and your income both go down by one as you get tangled up in red tape and as people show up. And that's interesting because it means for a, a tense beginning as certain players shoot off and a tense ending because these red lines get more and more dense later on and people slow down so you can catch people up, which is great. Also, it's just funny watching people panic because yet yeah, more migrants have shown up in their town. Oh, hi there. Are you from um, the council? Yes. Because I was hoping to move in. Oh, were you? Yeah. Oh, were you? It's the... Yeah. Another one, huh? Don't... Another one. No, huh? I just want to move in. I just want to... Yes. Are you? That's another exact... one. That is another exactly one. what I want. And we haven't yet mentioned the best thing about suburbia, which is lakes. Investments. No, it's lakes. Lakes are rubbish. Let me show you how lakes work. If you don't have any income, if you've found yourself broke, you can always take a tile from the market for free, denying everyone else. And then you flip it, you basically bulldoze it into a hole in the ground. You fill it full of water, you convince everyone it's a feature. And it works, it raises the value of your town, giving you $2 million for every hex around it, with a twist obviously being you'll never put anything else there ever. Except maybe bodies. Shh. And it's great for town planning too, like uh, you can separate industrial and residential areas and you'll never mix up the school and the slaughterhouse. Again, and it forms part of the lovely visual puzzle of your town, helping you think about how you're going to lay things out next. This endless brain tickling thing of what do I want to put down here next term? What's coming down the market? Okay, okay, what's enough, what's... enough. The good people no. are bored of listening about lakes. Because look, you're going to get three of these investment hexagons, okay? Lakes, Go lakes. away. And these are hexagons you put on hexagons. These are tokens you use to buff your borough making Offices shinier or homes shinier, shinier. or lakes, lakes, lakes shinier, shinier to hide the bodies better because it's mirrored. So what this is doing is, this Zabamia is already a game of grin inducing combos, right? You get that fast food restaurant, you do exactly what's required, it becomes an amazing super restaurant. It then says, oh you, you did something good, okay, would you like to double it? And that's so satisfying, it rewards you for playing well. And yet, this is a great puzzle in and of itself because you could save these tokens until the end of the game when you know what you need to win, or you could use them at the beginning to drive up your income, help you develop your settlement faster. As well as deciding which arteries and organs of your borough you want to inject these tankerfuls of cash into, you also have to bear in mind goals. And these goals are either public, which means everyone can aim for them, or they're private, just for yourself. And these affect the character of your town, how you're going to build. They shape the personality further. They can be things like being environmentalists, trying to have the fewest factories in your town, or maybe being a socialist, having the fewest privately owned businesses. Oh, yeah, but there are some super weird ones, like uh, you could be aquaphobic and afraid of water, which is interesting to think about thematically, or even better, your mayor could be an air traffic controller. Which, he just, like, he spills airports and shows up. Hi guys, how's it going? I love this stuff! What does this button do? No, Mr. Mayor, what does this button Mayor, Can you please leave us alone? They, it's mm, great. They do, they will affect the character of your town. But the thing is, you're not bound to them. Sure, you could get a victory point bonus boost if you're a libertarian and you have the fewest political buildings, but if you have all the right combinations of stuff, if you've really laid out your city, maybe you'll score more points by just having an awesome organised town. And maybe you should. Maybe you should because, you know, with the sort of libertarian no, 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 philosophy no, 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 of just... No, 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 Paul, oh, you know, Paul, 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 like Paul we've talked about politics. Freedom, it's freedom. No and, politics. You know, just having Paul, a lack no, of respect I'm just going to do this. Other people's needs. I'm going to do this. Like so empathy, Paul, 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 tea. When you live in tea. a society that is Paul, shared tea. by definition. Tea. So on the subject of theme, suburbia might seem as dry as dirt on toast, especially when game shops heave with games about dragons and spacecraft. But the fact is, I think these mundane themes are overrated because they're our world. And as such, they're funnier and do a better job of fostering storytelling than any other theme. In Suburbia Inc., when you put a law office next to a slaughterhouse, that tells the story whether you want it to or not because it draws from a wealth of real-world imagery. I think Suburbia is actually a really funny game, even though it doesn't want to be. 
Suburbia is just so easy to play and it's incredibly compulsive building a, a town, your town, neighbourhood by neighbourhood and it might look like a game that you play a lot by yourself but that's just not true. Whatever you, you choose from market or don't affects how everybody's town develops, affects which goals you can succeed at or fail and there are a lot of buildings that have a universal effect, they affect everybody. Maybe you'll put down a fancy restaurant in your town and while that's the only eatery in the area you'll make a lot of money but as soon as someone undercuts you with a fast food franchise your income is gonna evaporate. Now we've recommended quite a few good games this year but Suburbia has got to be one of the best. It's just so easy to get into and it's so compulsive and it's so different every time and we're just kind of addicted and okay look being serious now here's an actual serious proper cutaway outtake from when we tried to do this review. Maybe you're a socialist and you're trying to have the fewest privately owned businesses and the thing is oh or, or no because there's also <laughs> just missed my cue because again I was playing suburbia <laughs> <laughs> and that sort of thing was happening all the time. Can I talk about the expansion now? No. I'm gonna do it! Okay. Okay, so Suburbia Inc. adds exactly uh, four sheets of punch board to Suburbia, um, but it's no less awesome for that. The best thing you're gonna get are these new absurd market of massive border tiles, and these can be placed basically in any way you like. And that's funny because you're gonna be hiding your shame as you try and sandwich a council estate between a national park and a forest. They actually make the game a lot more complicated. There's also new tiles, there are interesting challenge and bonus tiles. In mid-game you have other things to strive for as well as end game, it's all just interesting. It also turns what was kind of a breezy game into something a bit heavier. Well, maybe make the game a bit heavier, a bit more complex. When Paul and I first played with Borders, what, we didn't use any of them for the, until we remembered they existed, like two well, thirds of the way through the game? Yeah, there is that, but it's also, if, if you want a breezier game where you have a chat and you have a relax, you have a relax. You have a relax, then you don't need Suburbia Inc, but... The expansion will make it heavier, it'll make it more complex, it'll make it more interesting, but you... Uh, you can have an interesting time anyway. That said, we won't be playing without it no. because because because, because it is it is awesome. But you don't need it. Or make the game as it makes it get bigger as, and better, bigger and as better. complicated as you want. So there's your review. Yeah, that's great. Uh, it's certainly flagging. Might go back to bed because it's probably not even. <laughs> <the problem. laughs> that's a good joke, Paul. Everybody knows that economic hexagonal tile laying game fest sees us reviewing two games. Are you kidding? Keyflower is another game of uh, economic hexagonal tile placement game and it's not as good as Suburbia I but it's... it kind of is. What? Ah! Don't betray me on this, the day of our lord economy hex based tile lane. Shut up! Stop! No, 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 look, we're getting ahead of ourselves, alright? Keyflower is actually part of a franchise known as the Key Games, which includes such games we've never played, like Key Market and Key Harvest, Key Town, the dubiously titled Key Thedral, and Keydom, and the lesser known and quickly cancelled Keydefile. That's not a real game. What matters is that Keyflower is a game where players settle a virgin continent, managing your villagers to develop your uh, village. Uh, now, now, while this game is rather excellent, it's also much heavier than Suburbia. Remember the reviews we did of Zolkin or Terra Mystica this year? Yeah, it's a bit like that. Mmm, hexes. Hexes, hexes, hexes. Praise the hex. Hexes. Oh, hexes. God bless hex, everyone. Every season, a platter of tiles will be served up and players will be bidding for these in an attempt to claim them, add them to their own villages and become more well you know, civilised. Bidding works like this. You'll pop down some workers, buy a tile, and you can also use workers to use a tile once it's in your village by putting them on them like this, but you see there's, there's a catch or a problem or a puzzle or a weapon, and that's the fact that once you've made a bid for a tile or you've used a tile, other players can only do similar things if they also put down the same coloured workers.
Where Keyflower comes alive though is in the mid game. It just explodes. Look, I've won a bit on this boat and the people have arrived and get in there lads! And they all live together in a house. Just know there's only one bed for all of you. Just, just be quiet, just enjoy it. It's quite erotic. And the thing is though that makes Keyflower so brain bunny is you don't just send them out to work in your village. You don't just send them out to work or to bid on all the new summer tiles. You can actually send them out to fire up your opponent's forges. You never see those villages again, but who's, who cares when you're stealing wood from his forest and using his toasted sandwich maker and drinking his milkshake? It just explodes with possibilities and ultimately leads towards an absurd winter where you don't care if you never see your family again and you, you send people away to use the horses to move the wood and the gold around to upgrade your jewelers and you get 15 points son, 15 points and it's worth it. No, you won't see your son again, but 15 points, that's a lot of points. Which is just rude, it's like some self-interested libertarian cop fest where you've got no respect uh, Okay, for what Paul means is that and... Keyflower speaks of a simpler time when people didn't lock their doors and you could go around your neighbour's house and borrow his things forever. Uh, I don't know anything about that, I grew up in London. But Keyflower is cool, the mechanics are cool, the ability to place a guy on a, a tile and paint it that colour and manipulate that. The ability to, to put resources somewhere and move those resources around, it's cool! It is cool putting stuff on a horse and taking it somewhere if you're just a big nerd. Uh, excuse me, I, well, actually no, yeah that's fair, we are just enormous nerds. Right, well yeah, I do actually quite like having a horse and a thing and a st putting the stuff in the cart and then taking it to maybe grain to a stable and having it in there. You I'm know just... what, this is a strategy <laughs> game with an element of building a train set, which is so cool and you, you have a forest and you transport wood to the thing, it's neat! And you know what? It's actually really brutal, isn't it? The thing is, you don't want to be taken in by the, the lovely pastoral look of the game. This is actually one of the most bloodiest and meanest and cutthroat games we've played in a while. It's a game of constantly outthinking people, stealing their resources away from them. If we were trying to sell you on Keyflower, we would say it's, it's tough and it's mean. The thing with so many worker placement games is they're just about a choice of whether to to take something for yourself or screw someone over, but Keyflower isn't. Keyflower with its lack of borders that allow you to get to other people and with its bidding mechanics that have you drive up prices or, or take people back if you're losing a bid. It's, it's got it's so It's flexible, much, you know? It's like, flexible, it's got so much more to it. A lot of worker games see you just blocking a guy. Keyflower feels like judo, it's like you block, but then you exactly, counter. It's exactly like You have Judo. to predict what your opponents want before they want it, and then just get in there with an attack. That's an illegal move, but that's not. He's fallen over. He has, yeah. But also keep an eye on your own master plan, but also try and drive up the price of everything if you can, just to screw with other people. It's just really interesting. There's an expansion coming out soon. Is there? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, the Farmers. Little Wooden Pigs. You're my little wooden pig. Get off. But damn it, Paul, which game is better? Well, it sounds like it's harder than Suburbia, doesn't it? It well, is harder. It is harder than Suburbia. And you play Keyfire if you want to play something that's more brutal, where you really want to get your teeth out, where you're willing to accept the possibility of a terrible defeat if there's a chance of a glorious, intelligent victory. Yeah, but you know what? I just, I, I love how simple Suburbia is. And I love how quick and joyous Suburbia is, and you know what? These days I love games that have the grace to end while you're still having fun. It's just really good value for money to put a game away and be bursting to just play it again. Bursting. Bursting. Well, Keyflower is great, but we like Suburbia more. It's wonderful and more accessible and, and lighter, and I suppose watching these two reviews, you're going to have your own urges to play one or the other. You're going to decide whether you want something faster and lighter. But Paul, it, what? what if we go hog crazy I, I and, and add another hog, game? Hog wild? I think it's hog wild. What if we threw Archipelago into the mix? I think we'd have to be hog wild. Oh well, it's tough out of the three of them, you know, this, this hexagonal economic tile game thing gets more expensive and more complicated when you bring in Archipelago, that's like the oh, uh, Archipelago. Top of the Yeah, it's, it's so, so glossy, but so big, but so good though! And it's so good, and it's so pretty. And so interesting, you know, with that semi-cooperative element of working together to prevent a rebellion on the island. Unless one of you is a sympathiser and they want the colony to be swallowed up in a violent uprising, which is a really cool concept. 
it. And then there's the trading between players and the buildings and the barbarians and bishops and so much colour and flavour. It is so good. It is still probably our game of the year, isn't it? But is it better than Suburbia? I don't know, you know, Suburbia is just, it's great because it's so simple and Archipelago is great because it tries so hard. Yeah, you know, this, we haven't played this for a while, I'd actually like to really play it again. And it I'd does, love to play it again. it's got so much complexity and depth and, and, and possibility again, like like all the games do. And it's probably is our game of the year, isn't it? Archipelago, yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the Keyflower is great. Oh. It's a great game. Well, the, the Keyflower has got the sort of, I guess it fits It's a really tough competition. It fits wonderfully in the middle ground because it's got a lot of the real intelligence and the grit of Archipelago and it's, it's, it's difficult and it's really taxing and it allows you to really, really surprise other players and really screw them over. And, and but not as much as Archipelago. Well, no. But so which do they buy? It, it sits nicely in the middle ground. Well, they, they buy Suburbia because it's easier to play. Yes, but they also buy Archipelago. With, the thing is, Suburbia, you're going to play that, and you're probably going to play Suburbia again, where Archipelago is going to take you like an afternoon or an evening, and you'll have a great time, so you should play it, probably buy it. Um, and probably also buy, buy any of them. All of them. We're not really helping but people, are we? We're not helping people buy a game. Maybe they can decide which level of complexity they want. Do you think people can do that by themselves? No. Tell you what though, Paul. What? This might be the best. Economic he hex. No, type. no, no, shut up. Just no.